just annoyed by this online school thing? It's hard to stay focused. You feel like what they are teaching you is not important. Each teacher gives you multiple assignments and expects you to get it all done. I'm tired. My back hurts, my head hurts. I'm just over it. You could rest, but only if you are willing to not listen at all and be lost in the end. But I try my best to pay attention. I've learned to appreciate school a lot more. I used to complain and be, but now I'm begging. I never realized that I should have been more grateful for, for going to school. Now I wish I had been. I have to wake up to learn some things that I'm not going to need in the future. Social studies sucks. I learn, I learn about rivers and stuff, but not the history behind it. What happened to learning stuff about black history? I would like to learn more about my ancestors and I would like to learn some history about other places, maybe Alabama. If I design an online class, I would teach important things like black history and life lessons. And I would still keep math and reading. Kids whose parents don't bother to talk about black history will only add on to those kids being closed-minded and going off into the wrong path. Maybe if they knew a lot more, then they would want to make their ancestors proud and instead of joining gangs and stuff. I can't focus. They're talking about nothing. Their voices are easy to tune out. When will it end? All I'm learning is to learn to be more appreciative. They just sound plain boring. Some of them only talk about wanting to hear us talk and how if we don't do this, then we won't be able to get this. When you don't really want to hear, hear that and you're good at tuning people out, it becomes very tempting to do it. I've learned to be more appreciative of school and to just enjoy life. I never would have thought I'd have to wear a mask to save my life. Leave it, I got it in safe hands. Worry if I lost it, I'm coming. Overwhelmed with security, but it's locked in my heart without a key. When you pass the seal, you passed it to me. No, I'm not gonna hide it, just know it's mine. I guess ours, but you lost it all. Now you gotta deal with me because you playing with my insecurities that I secured in thee. Told you I'm an old guard, don't ever play with me. My heart was pounding and my ears suffered from my feet clanging on the concrete of the suburban sidewalk. My nose was burning from the smell of the dumpster that I just passed in this trash hole of a city. Why? It's because I stole from a fruit stand. A fruit stand. I mean, it's not like I stole from the queen. I did that last week. Meanwhile, my feet had ulcers and I was running out of breath. breath. Yet, I was still being chased by the royal guard. Blue, you bunch of, hey, hey, there are kids present. Didn't you read the sign? Kids crossing, I said. He gave me a cold look, and after that, I knew I was in trouble, because I saw more royal guards come out of the corner. On behalf of the queen, stop in the name of the law. How about no, I yelled back to the guards. Oh man, do I hate them. Then I heard something that knocked my socks off. Or they would if I had socks, or in that case, shoes. There was one word to describe it. A howl, a horrible ear-piercing howl that made the entire earth itself, itself quiver and shake. The royal guards knew it too. That's why they ran like toddlers in the other direction when they heard it. Oh, but not me. Oh no, not me. I had gone through worse events than this and I wasn't gonna give in to fear. I'd done that before and I could never forget the consequences. So I bravely froze. I could have run. I could have called for help, not that anyone would have helped me, but it, been, it could have been worth a try. But instead I froze. Yeah, I froze, right? Anyways, I looked in the direction of the howl and my eyes locked on a rustling bush. I heard more rustling in the bush and then saw red eyes, eyes of the devil himself. It felt like the eyes were reaching into my soul and pulling out every happy memory that I ever had. And I only had a few, so I'll hold on to the so I held on to the ones that I had, like a kid held on to a balloon, or how a gator held on to his prey, and my feelings swirled around like the death roll the gator does after. It was only after I saw the monstrosity come slightly out of the bush and saw its dog-like shaggy hair, its buried veins with blood, and what looked like to be a fingernail stuck in its horrid molars that I felt a feeling I hadn't felt in years. Scared. 
but my ears screamed with joy and maybe I did a little dance when I heard a horn honk. You know, that horn honk. The honk that made me more excited and jittery than a kid on Halloween, the rock and roller. I could have looked at that beautiful spray painted pressure washed car forever, but I soon realized that I couldn't because of that horrid animal was coming closer and closer and closer. But then what looked to be a bag of spray cans from the truck that I tremendously adore hit that mistake of a wolf right in the fangs. And it confused the wolf long enough for the rock and roller to come between me and the wolf, literally, and did a 180 so the driver's seat was farther away from us. Guess who was in that seat? Shoulders up, big and proud. Backwards hat, brown skin that was silky as chocolate, but hard as stone. Jean shorts and pants, New York accent, and an I love 80 shorts uh, shirt. I kept telling him it was not 2050, but he was difficult. Bruno, get in, he yelled. Bruno, oh sorry, um, but he was difficult. Bruno, get in, he yelled. He didn't need to tell me twice. I jumped in the trunk, I, duck, I jumped in the truck. Spray paint cans dug into my rim, ribs and I whimpered in praying. Oh sorry mate, I forgot to put these babies back in the garage. I rolled my eyes. As you can see, he had a big array of paint cans in this truck and everywhere. I have an idea, he said. What I replied, knowing it was gonna be a horrible idea. I was right. You know that feeling that's like a vice grip that I'll never let go? It's called doubt. That's the feeling that I felt in Bruno when he went on to the roof of the truck and an empty driver's seat was all that was left. Of course, it didn't stay that way because someone had to drive it, right? I had never had a doubt in my life when it came to Bruno, but I was really close when he climbed on top of a moving truck which I was driving with one hand and started sling shooting, slingshotting, <laughs> whatever, cans of spray paint <laughs> at the mangy looking wolf. Surprisingly, it didn't slow him down enough. When Bruno climbed back into the truck, the first thing he said was, that was sick, I'm gonna name that guy Dave. Why I asked really lost? So we don't have to call him Wolf anymore. I laughed on the inside, but the moment didn't last long because the horror wolf was still on her tail. Bruno turned on the exit of the path and he Tokyo drifted into the alley. And I think I threw up there. I was also kind of cur curious why there was dumplings in it. I hadn't had dumplings in like two years, so it was weird. Anyways, the wolf was still hot on her trail and I, and I knew we couldn't lead it back to the base. So I did the best thing I could think of. I didn't know why my best idea was to jump out of a moving truck and put my hand in the wolf's face, but it worked. But it didn't work like I expected. The wolf stopped in its tracks and started whimpering like it was in pain when it got close to my hand. I didn't know why, but it was afraid of me. So I tried something out. I turned around not to look at him and he came close to attacking me, but I looked at him again and he whimpered and he was scared. I tried this a couple times and I got the same reaction. I shooed him away and he was gone in about two seconds. I let out a sigh of relief when I saw her home. Terra and its blaze of glory, splinters of wood and many last in its present. A whole swarm of tree houses and, uh, where I hang out with friends and roasted marshmallows, my home. I still have questions like, why was the wolf scared of me? What happened to the wolf? And why did I throw up dumplings? But I think it was more calming to know that I was home. But little did I know, something menacing and horrible would happen. The end. This is Akeem Jr. He's 17. By size, he looks 20. But by heart, an infant wipes that clean. He's sitting there in silence, staring at the little critter who feels so uncomfortable at the moment in time. No dust mite. I don't wanna to talk to you right now because you're just gonna give me allergies and I don't really want that right now. Anyways, the minute my mother pushed me out and almost died was the day me and America played baseball. I was black, strike one. I was a black male, strike two. And I was a beautiful black male. Okay, okay, maybe not beautiful, but I was a black male prospect from the jump. I don't know about y'all, but the same always went three strikes and you're out, right? Walking on a thin tightrope, polished with bright goldish yellow. 
Under me were flying monkeys with black suits and rich, dark red ties. Shaking the line, messing with me, trying to throw me off. They almost threw me off, but my mama didn't raise no, no unathletic, inflexible boy. The fiery pits, a stereotypical systematic slavery are hitting me with wave after wave, heat after heat. My sweat perishing with single touch of mother's nature's scorning hands. I can see my mother and my brother on the other side of the cave. I saw something I thought I would never see, a way out, <laughs> the light on the other side. And I finally made it with motivation and cheers. I am Akeem Yasir Bond Jr. And I want to thank everybody. And I want to thank my mother and my brother for motivating me all the way to the other side of the cave. Thank you.